Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Grow and Go podcast. I'm your host, Mike Idsani with caregiving.com. And today we have a very, very special guest, the one and only Barry J. Jacobs. Barry is a clinical psychologist. He is an expert in all things caregiving, and he shares, a obviously, a very, very cool perspective from the male caregiving view. Um, it's Men's Health Month, so we decided we need to focus in on male caregiving and male caregivers, um, and I think you'll get a lot out of today's interview. This is not just for men's eyes and ears only. There's a lot of great perspective, I think a lot of great learnings here for just about everybody uh, to take away. So I hope you enjoy the interview. Just a little quick review of Barry's resume. Uh, obviously, I mentioned he's a clinical psychologist, but he's a principal at Health Management Associates. He's got a doctor of psychology from Widener University, a bachelor of arts from Brown University. The guy has written books. The guy has written articles. He knows what he's talking about, and he knows how to say it. So I really enjoyed this interview. I hope you all do as well. So let's get into it. All right, Barry, thanks for uh, joining us here on the Grow and Go podcast. Um, we really appreciate you doing this and looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts, especially on this important topic. So thanks. Mike, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So um, we'll get right into it. Um, you know, in the report that the uh, National Alliance for Caregivers and AAR put out this, or AARP put out this year, they estimate about 39% of caregivers today are men. And so while mathematically that is a minority, it's still obviously a very significant portion of the caregivers today. Do you feel like in your opinion, sort of the resources, the perspectives, the, the voices of caregiving today do a really a good job of reflecting this audience? Or do you feel like male caregivers are still somewhat underrepresented uh, in that class? Uh, and I'm glad you brought up those statistics, Mike, because I, I will tell you that when that report was done in 2009, there were only 34% of, of caregivers were men. So us men are, you know, stepping up and, and doing a little bit more. Um, and I, but I, I agree with, with, with the premise of your question. I, I don't think that a lot of the, the, uh, the, the writing about caregiving will really reflects um, what men are doing, unless they're, they're specifically doing something about male caregiving. Otherwise, the prototypical caregiver is, is a woman, uh, usually middle-aged, uh, caring for a parent, um, and uh, you know maybe that, that classic sandwich generation caregiver, but, but men are, are, are really seen as uh, in the background somehow. And, I, and I'll tell you, I, I think I mentioned this to you in a previous conversation, I, I was the, the caregiver for my mom who had vascular dementia and uh, also assisted her in caring for my stepfather who had Alzheimer's disease. And because I was a male caregiver, uh, people, uh, you know, friends and, and family treated me like I was some sort of uh, special, you know, instance of caregiving rather than seeing me as just another son, you know, doing another child doing something for a parent that, that children do for parents all the time. Uh, and it was sometimes very uncomfortable. Like, you know, people kind of looked at me as, I was a, as if I was a hero rather than just another caregiver. Whereas I would see women in doing exactly the same thing who were, whose, whose efforts were taken for granted and that wasn't fair to them. Uh, so I, I, I do think there's a double standard here. Do, in, in, why do you think that is? Do you think it's, again, because of the, race, the, the, the larger ratio of female caregivers historically, or do you think there's something else underlying the problem? I, I mean, I think the, the, the uh, historical ratio matters to a degree, but I also think that, um, and I'm, I'm making kind of vast generalizations here, uh, that women are socialized to be caregivers of one sort or another, and, and men are seen to be um, kind of cold and stoic and, and breadwinners, but they're not often thought of as, as uh, doing a lot of the work that, that women do in the home. Uh, so I, I think those stereotypical images get in the way of our, our perceiving men for what they're doing today. Yeah, I mean, gender stereotypes, even though it's 2020, there's a lot of those still do remain um, and are true. And I think one in particular you just sort of highlighted there is that um, there's barriers to proper emotional support oftentimes for, for men. So how would you, you know, with your personal experience as sort of the backbone and then sort of your professional career and research leading up or from that, um, how can male caregivers effectively communicate their needs and, and seek that support from peers? 
Uh, well, I think number one, male caregivers have to be willing to reach out for support uh, because you know not all male caregivers fit that that stereotypical image of this the stoical male, but some do, and some are are very reluctant to uh, to accept help or, or that's offered or reach out for help at all, as if they're somehow uh, doing something shameful. Uh, so I, I think uh, so. There's there you know those men have to be willing. And then there are, there are men who kind of are at the opposite end of the spectrum, and that is they, they tend to be uh, kind of very dependent, and they'll, they'll ask for help very readily and then kind of hand over all responsibility to other people if they can. Um, most of us are somewhere in the middle, and uh, when we reach out for help, generally speaking, the, the help is available. I mean, I, uh, to keep, you know, we, within our communities, the infrastructure that exists, the area agencies on aging, the uh, adult daycare programs, home health aids. There, there, there is help there, and, and, and often help within families. Um, the one exception that I'll say that uh, where where men are not so well supported are the male spousal caregivers, those that are caring for uh, uh, you know a spouse, maybe someone with whom they've been uh, they've been married for ten or twenty or, or, or forty years, and then everybody expects, well, you know, you are the spouse, you do this, and so spousal caregivers don't often get the same degree of support that uh, adult children get, for instance. And, and so, and that's a really interesting one, right? Cause that there's a, there's a significant dynamic at play that to changes, right. From being, from being a spouse to a caregiver. So, so sort of, there's a lot of questions that I could ask that stem from this, but the first one would be how does, and it doesn't have to be specific to that case, but how does being a man really affect the dynamic between caregiver and care recipient? I think it depends a lot on who the care recipient is. So um, when my stepfather had Alzheimer's disease, the fact that I was a man uh, meant that when he got agitated and you know, I could say something to him, he would respect what I would say, whereas he would ignore what my mom said. Um, and uh, so the fact that I was a male actually helped in that. It kind of gave me a certain authority just by, by dint of my gender. When I was caring for my mother, however, um, and she needed personal care, um, Sometimes get help getting dressed or, or, or help uh, you know getting on and off the commode. Uh, it was terribly embarrassing for her to ask her son to do this. Uh, my mother, you know, had two sons, but you know, throughout her throughout her life, she always said, "I wish I had daughters." You know, she and I think especially at the time when she needed that kind of help, she wanted a daughter, someone with whom she wasn't going to be embarrassed. Um, and it was embarrassing for me. I was embarrassed for her. That, that I was doing this for her. And I, you know, we would talk about it and try to normalize it as much as possible, but it was never comfortable. Yeah. And did you, you know, when you were going through that experience, were there things that you found helpful for yourself to sort of o overcome that? Because you, you have to do the job, right? So were there ways that you sort of mitigated that feeling of embarrassment or awkwardness, especially caring for female in that case? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that we, we keep our eyes on the higher mission, you know, the, the, the goal that we set for ourselves. I, I wanted my mom to live as well as she could for as long as she could. I wanted her to live in the home, her, her apartment, as long as she could. And if, and, and if the things I were doing were, were not that pleasant, it didn't matter so long as I was, I was achieving the purpose of, of helping her live the way she wanted to live. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that kind of keeping my eye on, the, on that higher goal uh, got me through a lot of unpleasant situations oftentimes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a mission, it's a very mission oriented or mission driven role for sure. So you can keep your, uh, keep your mind on that. It probably will help, especially in the short run. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought of when, you know, you mentioned sort of that dynamic um, for men and, and, and sort of being stoic, what are the benefits though to, you know, identifying as a caregiver? Um, I know in our experience on the technology side, we often see men, especially not identifying themselves as a caregiver, but for all intents and purposes, based on the, what they are doing to support their loved one, they are in fact a caregiver. Um, and you see, at least again, in our experience, you see men sort of prolonging that self-identification as long as possible, maybe to their detriment. Um, what are the benefits to sort of identifying as a caregiver um, from a man's perspective? Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll just, I'll say in general first, I mean, I, I think if you don't, if you don't identify yourself as a caregiver, 
you don't avail yourself of the caregiver supports that exist. And you, you know, you identify yourself as a, as a dutiful family member and you just kind of put your head down and do what needs to be done. Um, I think, um, I think if you're a historical male and you don't identify yourself as a caregiver, then, then that, that lack of identification uh, kind of reinforces your, your, the tendency you already have to not, to not seek help. And, you know, the problem with not seeking help, and, and I've, I mean, God, I've had this conversation with so many male caregivers over the years. Um, the problem is, um, you know, it, it's, it's always, I, I mean, I use a cliche image of the, of the marathon. <clears throat> it would be like running a marathon and not taking any water at any of the water stations the first 15 miles. And then when you're completely depleted, then reaching for water and trying to replenish yourself then. It doesn't work. It's so you, you need to, you know, someone running runs a marathon, they grab a water bottle at every water station. Cause even if they're they're not even that exhausted by the first water station, they know that this this is a, a long race and they, they need to replenish themselves at every opportunity. And that to me is is the same thing with men who, who avail themselves of all the help that's available as early as possible. So so that's and that's great. I, I love that analogy. Um, as a as a runner myself, I completely get that having having done it the wrong way once and then done it the right way ever ever since. Um, so so just shed some light then on uh, maybe those those water stations that exist for male caregivers, um, support groups, um, finding resources, friends and family. You know what it, what practical advice would you give? Again, you can go high level um, for male caregivers on sort of searching out those supports and if there is interest, how to go about doing that. So I, I, I always talk about the three circles of support. So the, the first circle that an inner circle is, is immediate family. I mean, you know, it could be asking uh, people in the same household to step up and do things. It could be asking someone you know, who's another close family member who lives nearby. Um, many people don't even do that. I mean, and then the, the second circle is the more extended family members or neighbors, and community members, church members, um, which people begin to be, gain, you know, have greater reluctance. And the third would be um, any kind of professional supports. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, home health aides, you know, medical professionals, social service professionals, but it also could include, um, uh, all the, the, the caregiving apps, the caregiving websites, things that uh, people can turn to to read about caregiving and learn, learn some of the skills of caregiving and, and become more proficient at it. Um, and, and really what most of us need is we need all three circles. We need, we need to be really smart and strategic about the way we're doing this. And that means taking advantage of everything that's out there. Uh, we may not need everything at every single time, um, but many of the folks that we're caring for have progressive uh, illnesses and as their needs change as the demands grow we, we have to be ready to to take on more services and more supports i think this is a really interesting conversation not only for 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 men to hear and to participate in but i also think it's important that that um outside of sort of this male caregiver ecosystem, folks are, are understanding better how they can support male caregivers, especially because we know a lot of it is being kept inside. So uh, from, a, from an outside looking in uh, perspective, what advice would you give someone so that they can show support for male caregivers that they may know in their lives? Uh, if, if someone is reluctant to reach out for help and you know that about them, then I would just show up. Um, and showing up may be just, you know, show up with your lawnmower and mow the lawn or bring, bring dinner over, you know, or, you know, bring a box of donuts. Uh, I mean, but do something, some little gesture. Uh, most folks are not going to say, get out of here with a, that box of donuts, um, <laughs> unless they have health issues. <laughs> but, you know, most people will accept some help, especially if it's, if it's if they recognize that you've gone out of your way to do something nice for them. They, they don't want to be ungracious about it so that they'll accept the help and um i, I think then it's you know it, it's, it becomes a uh, uh, more normalized when people are, are are doing things for one another the other thing which i always try to do particularly for for male care, caregivers who are reluctant to accept help is to try to f create a, a more reciprocal relationship so i'm, I'm going to do this for you and and you know dad by the way can you do this for me can you can you take care of this thing for me? 
um, so that it, it, it still feels like there's give and take in the relationship. It's, it's still a relationship of, of equals or, or dad's dignity is still being uh, maintained. And, but dad also can, can, can take some, some help from other people as, as he's providing care. Right. You, you're not forcing him to feel like a charity case, that he's a sort of an equal person in the trade. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I like that idea. You know, same, same, said the same perspective. What about, you know, the workplace? Um, you know, what are some, uh, what kind of language or messaging can organizations like caregiving.com or others or AARP, I think has done a pretty good job of this. Um, what can, what can we use to be more inclusive of male caregivers and sort of create that, that space for them? So in 2017, AARP put out a, a brief about male caregiving, uh, and, and one component of, of, of that brief was on, on this issue of work, and uh, that many men are embarrassed to tell their bosses that, uh, that they're a caregiver for fear that they'll be discriminated against somehow, that they'll be seen as, as uh, unreliable in the workforce. Um, and uh, that is really a shame. Um, so the message from caregiving.com ought to be to, to employers, you know, you need to let your employees know that if they're caregivers, we are, we're, we are ready and willing to work with them. We're ready to give them flex time. We're, rel we're willing to give them caregiver education. Uh, we're, we're willing to, to, to bend with them a little bit to make, make their lives a little easier. Um, and, if, and if an employer gives that message to a male caregiver, then they are more likely to raise their hand and say, hey, yeah, I'm doing this, and I could use that flex time that you're offering. Or I could, use it, I could take a day off to take my mom to the doctor, for instance. Um, and that, is, uh, you know, that, that would be an enormous support. Uh, I, I, when I was caring for my mom and I, and I went to, the, to, her, to her doctor's appointments all the time, it was, the fact, it was the fact that I had a job with that kind of flexibility that made all the difference. If I had a boss that was either intolerant of my doing that or didn't know that I, I needed to, to take my mom to the doctor, um, my life would have been a whole lot harder. Yeah. Yeah. So, so employers sort of de-risking the topic by getting out in front of it and letting everybody know like this is something that's available to you guys. We support it 100%, both male and female, I would assume. Um, that's really great. The other thing we'll do in the, in the show notes is I'll, we'll link the, um, we'll link that AARP piece. Um, cause I, I don't, I don't recall seeing that. So we'll make sure to link that in the, in the show notes so folks can find it and, uh, and be able to, to use that. Yeah. So just by the way, the, the, the title of that brief is called breaking the stereotype. Okay. 2017. And, but it, it's essentially a lot about what we're talking about today. How do we take this the stereotype of men no, don't aren't caregivers and 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 break it and, and actually show the men who are doing this really good work? Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's what this conversation is all about. That's what you know one of the one of the focus areas for me with caregiving.com and also the the work we do with Carly. It's it's this is something that's close to my heart because I've seen uh, not so much myself, but I've seen my father and my father in law sort of fall into this sort of pattern of well, I'm not a caregiver because I don't do X. But in many ways, you know, the A, B, and C that they're doing on a daily basis completely classifies them in that role. They've just been sort of hesitant to accept that. Um, so I think this is, I think it's important. I think shedding light on it is important and, and making people feel you know, comfortable with it. So anyway, thank you so much. Th those were the questions. I think there's a ton of value in that, uh, in those answers. Uh, so I appreciate you taking some time sharing with us. Where can, where can folks find more about, about Barry Jacobs and, and the work that you do, which I've been a big fan of for a lot of years now? Where can we find more about you and, and sort of your writing? Uh, well, thank you for asking that. I, I, I do a lot of writing for the AARP website. If you just put it, put it into Google AARP Barry Jacobs, uh, my, uh, my, what they call it, a caregiving expert page will come up, which has uh, uh, usually the last five or six of my articles for them. Um, I have uh, uh, a, uh, uh, I'm on Facebook, Dr. Barry J. Jacobs, all one word. And uh, I also have a website, emotionalsurvivalguide.com. So um, those are all ways that people can, can look me up. Awesome. You know you've got a lot of clout when you can just say Google me. <laughs> <laughs> well, just um, Google my name. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but I, I mean, not. I, I wish that clout uh, was, was more significant than it is. But yes, I, I mean, it's 
nice it's nice that people that I've been around a long time sometimes just by dint of sticking around a long time you get you know your, your name it gets out there a little bit hey you're you're a celebrity in the circles I run in so I, I appreciate you taking some time and, and answering some of these questions for us in the audience hey my pleasure thanks a lot Mike I told you Barry was awesome Thank you so much to Barry Jacobs for taking the time to share with the audience, you know, what's important, some great tips and practical advice for male caregivers, some perspective for male caregivers and those who support male caregivers. I think there's a lot that could be done. I think there's a lot of support and ways we can show support for male caregivers. It can be a lonely role. Um, and so it was great to hear uh, Barry's perspective and his thoughts on it. Um, as we mentioned in the in the article uh, or in the interview, sorry, we're going to share some links below in the show notes um, to the uh, study that AARP did, and as well as uh, where to find more of of Barry's articles, as well as his um, you know Facebook handle, which he mentions in the interview as well. So. Thank you guys so much. If you ever have ideas, thoughts, questions uh, about the interviews or or for future guests, please share those in the comments uh, or on our social media. We're looking, looking, and looking for inspiration for new guests and new topics. So please share that stuff with us. If you like the episode, please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Please share it with your friends and family. Um, we're seeing a lot, a lot of positive feedback on these and folks taking away some really good learnings from them. So all of that helps. And I think getting this in the hands and in front of more people is only going to help us as an industry and us as uh, a collective. So thank you guys so much for supporting. Um, I suppose I should address, address the hair. Listen, sometimes you got to make a change. This is it. You know, all this working from home stuff's got me going a little stir crazy. Needed to do some fun. That's it. <laughs> I hope you like it. Anyway, thanks again. We'll see you next time. I think the blonde is here to stay. I don't know. Just me. <laughs> thanks again, guys. All right. Bye. <laughs>